Hi everyone, my name is Jared Hill, and today what I want to do is talk to you about the basics of DTG printing. Now I'm going to tell you something that's a little controversial. I'm going to say DTG printing is actually simple. Now some people may disagree with that, but the reality is where the complexities come with DTG is trying to remember too much at the very beginning. So there's some basics that you need to go over to understand how a DTG system operates and then you take it in stride. It's just like when you're learning a new language, uh, you don't learn the new language in a day or even a week. It takes a long time to master. With direct to garment if you understand the basics, it, you'll actually be very successful. And as you continue to use the system, you can begin to develop the little extra things that really make your prints spectacular. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to print a full front. Uh, but another area that a lot of people like to print are your tags. So we're going to go ahead and print a tag. Now with the M2, it gives me the ability to do two different platens at once. So on the first platen, I'm going to go ahead and do the full design. On the second platen, I'm just going to go ahead and do the tag. Now if you want efficiency and so forth and you're doing mass volumes, then using a platen like a two-up platen for, uh, we call this a chest platen, but we can use that for sleeves like maybe right in this area. Uh, we use it for tags. Uh, but what we would do is you would have two here and two here. So you'd have a four up essentially. Uh, but for this purpose, let's just say, you know, you're printing a, a tag for a customer or even for your own designs. Uh, this is kind of give you a nice little uh, platen here, platen here, nice little efficiency just for smaller runs. So I'm going to go ahead and start the process. Uh, but what we're going to do is um, as, as we start the process of the actual printing, I'll go ahead and explain the basics of the printer itself. And so what we have on the, um, the art side here is basically in our software, it's pretty versatile. So what we've done is we've given the ability to uh, create two separate platens. And on this one, I'm going to be using the bottom platen here. And so when I bring my artwork in, I place the first one here, which of course will be printing here. And the second one is on the bottom platen here. And I only included that because I'm not using this one. And so it's here. So, and this is a template I've set up. We have videos on how to set things like that up. Uh, what we do here is we just bring the artwork in and then we process the job. Now with the M2, because we have two different designs, it's gonna go ahead and process those at one time. So we're gonna go ahead and grab these real quick. And we want to load our shirt first, so we're going to go ahead and bring this in just a little bit. And on the M2, uh, the bed has a height uh, sensor, and so basically we just want to make sure the height is correct, which for us, this green light means go. So we're going to go ahead and hit the load button here, and as soon as this is loaded, we can go ahead and send a job to print. And so this is already loaded, ready to go, and then all we have to do is hit print. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go over the basics of DTG printers in general. So most DT, not all, but most DTG printers have some basic components. You have your ink delivery system that feeds into what are called dampers, which are essentially little mini cartridges. That goes into the print head down through the capping station. So the basics are pretty much similar across the board on almost all DTG printers, but most of them are the same. So basically, um, what this is doing right now is it's feeding the information from the printer, and what we have is a couple areas I really do want to talk about. There's what's called an encoder strip. What this is, is it's actually a strip that's very clear. There's vertical lines printed in the thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands even, and this little encoder strip is what tells the printer where to print. And so if that gets dirty, then you could actually have misprints. Uh, another thing that you really want to look for is color. So the printer runs off of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and of course white. And so that's called CMYK or process printing. That's used in magazines, newspapers, uh, really online uh, is RGB, which is red, green, blue. So what we're doing is we see visually RGB, the, the system prints with CMYK. So it's trying to emulate what we visually see. So if we have cyan, which is blue, magenta, which is essentially red, yellow, and black. So what we have right now is, again, it's going to finish up the white, 
and we're going to go ahead and print this tag at the same time. Now, the one of the reasons why I really wanted to print a tag is because as more research I do in the industry, I'm finding out that a lot of people really want personalized t-shirts. Not only on the fronts, but they want their own labels in those shirts as well. So a lot of these t-shirts have tearaway tags, what's called a tearaway tag, so you just basically grab it and rip it. Uh, but the tag that you place in, of course, you want to put wash care instructions, you want to put your name, phone number, email, whatever you want in there is fine, but there's some basic things that you want to go by. Uh, but so what we found is when people do tagging, uh, there's actually an increase of revenue for their own company because what they're doing is they're really customizing to even a greater degree than what other people have the capability of doing. And so that's uh, one nice thing about this. Uh, M2 is being able to do both the front and the tag at the same time if you choose to do so. Uh, so another area is I want to talk about is the ink delivery system itself. And so on the M2, what we have is we have a circulating system. Now the circulating system actually is, is on the white ink and it actually helps keep the ink um, agitated. And so what happens with direct-to-garment printing is the white ink has, you know, not, not to get too technical, but it has a titanium dioxide, which is essentially a metal. And so metal and water separate, right? And so really what we have is called a soft settle ink. So it takes a little while for that settling to take effect, but it could cause issues for printing if you let it go too long. So what we have is called the WIMS, which is a white ink management system. And what that does is it will agitate the ink and it'll circulate the ink. So it keeps the ink in a good state throughout your printing process, even overnight and so forth. So over a period of time, you can let this sit a little bit longer than you normally would without a system of that nature. And so that gives you the ability to keep your white ink nozzles firing consistently throughout the printing process day after day. And so uh, really on this design here, the total design cost was $1.56. Now what that includes is the tag, um, but really it's going to, the software will actually tell you how much it costs ahead of time. You don't have to print it. So if you're trying to estimate a job or anything like that, uh, you can actually look and see what the actual cost is and say, there's a calculator we even have that says, well, I'm printing 125 shirts. It'll tell you how much ink you actually need. It'll tell you the overall cost. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking all this information, you're utilizing it for your own sales, uh, for your own profit margins and things of that nature. But again, as you understand some of these basics, what happens is you're, you retain them and you're able to continue day after day with comfortability. You have reliability in the printer, you have reliability in the process, and so you're, you feel very comfortable selling your product. And so what we'll do after these are finished, we'll go ahead and cure the inks but one other area that I do want to talk about is sometimes, you know, someone might say, well, the direct-to-garment printer, maybe it takes a little bit longer to do the tag and you're doing a large volume. We actually have um, different methods that you can apply for the tagging. And uh, we, we have other videos that you can refer to um, that will actually explain that. We have one called a digital heat effect system that, you know, it's, you literally print sheets and it does white toner as well cut them out and heat press them on. A uh, very quick, effective method for larger volume. For smaller volumes, you can you know, do two things at once here. It's not as uh, critical for time, but if you really are time sensitive in that type of thing or you have large volumes and something like that might be a little bit more conducive to your output. So as we can see, we have the full platen here. And we can bring that up here like that. And then, of course, we have our tag. So what we're going to do is uh, oftentimes what we find is if you hover the press before you actually press it, it helps retain the vibrancy. And so um, I'm just going to go ahead and hover that for just about 30 seconds. On this, this is your tag area. Now, with the tag area, it's obviously a very small area, so what we find is you can use a hat heat press for that. Obviously, the nice thing about that is you can use it for hats. And so we have platens available, you know, for hats. Because it's a small area, we don't really have to hover this. 
Uh, but we do have parchment paper, and a lot of times we uh, put the parchment there on the cure, and that's for protecting the shirt itself and also the platen on the heat. So we're going to go ahead and just put that right on there, and we'll bring that down. And because the, uh, with a tag area, because the area is so small, you actually don't have to do two minutes because, again, part of the curing process is actually removing all that excess water and liquid. And so we'll just go ahead and just peel up the parchment real quick. And we'll go ahead and press it one more time. And that's because it's a lot of area. But again, with the tags, you don't really have to do that. One minute is fine because, again, there's hardly any moisture here. So that's what we have there. And you can see that we have a nice tag printed area. Now, again, this is not a tagless tee, but you can. Okay, so now we have our final press. With that little technique, it actually helps retain the vibrancy of that print. Now it's really hot, so we just want to make sure that uh, we don't touch it immediately, shake it off a little bit, and as you can see. Once again, this is Jared Hill from Coldassi. I appreciate the time you spent with me. We have some new videos coming all the time, so be on the lookout for those and about tagging and everything else. And if for any other questions that you do have, definitely give us a call or send us an email or visit our website, uh, www.coldassi.com.